Hello everyone, thanks for joining today. Today we have Shahadat with us. He is going to give a demonstration and also we'll talk about the new introduction of Qform CLI and remote backend. Shahadat, you can start. Okay, thank you, Rakib. Hello everyone, welcome to our today's Qform webinar. This is Shahadat Hussain, software engineer at FSCUD. Here is the table of contents that I'm going to cover today. First of all, I will talk about the Qform and its brief description. Then we will see what is new in our latest release. After that, I will move to the demo where we will see a hands-on demo of Qform Remote Backend and Qform CLI. After the demo, Tomal will discuss about our upcoming feature, Terraform module support in Qform. And finally, there will be a question answer session where I will try to answer your questions. You can ask your questions in the Zoom chat link. I will get back to them in the question answer session. So let's at first, let's understand what is Qform. Qform by AppScore is a Kubernetes controller for provisioning and managing cloud or on-prem resources using Terraform providers. Qform provides Kubernetes CRDs for Terraform resources so that you can manage any cloud infrastructure in a Kubernetes native way. Qform is built on Terraform. So as we know, Terraform is a mature technology, so you can rely on Qform as much, much as you rely on Terraform. You just write a CRD for your cloud infrastructure, then apply it and Qform will create the cloud resources for you. And also you can manage your cloud resources using Qform. It is a GitOps ready. Uh, you can just store your custom resources in a Git repo and use CI CD pipeline like GitHub Actions and can automate the infrastructure managing portion. Currently, we are supporting 24 cloud providers, which almost cover all the top cloud providers. Some of them, uh, some of the top cloud providers are given here, like AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, DigitalOcean, Linode, Equinix Metal, and 17 more. You can visit our GitHub organization at github.com slash qform to see all the cloud providers that Qform supports. In our latest release, we have added two very interesting features. One is Qform Remote Backend, and another one is Qform CLI. Qform CLI is basically a Qform QCTL plugin. And we will see details in details of both of them, one by one. At first, let's see the Qform Remote Backend. It is equivalent to Terraform Remote Backend. Basically in Terraform and also in our Qform, there are two types of backend. One is local and another one is remote. The default backend is local backend. In this case, in the local backend case, the resource state is stored under the spec.state field of a Qform resource YML. So using a remote backend, we can store the resource state in cloud buckets and can use it further from that stored location. And remote backends allow the use of a shared storage space for resource state. Multiple user can use the same resource using the remote backend. The resource state now can be maintained remotely as we are storing it in a remote bucket like Google bucket, Amazon S3 bucket, and many more. Now, we can use either local backend or remote backend and can even switch from local backend to remote backend in the middle. And Qform supports almost all the top cloud providers buckets as a remote backend. Some of them are given here, like S3, GCS, Azure, PG, and many more. So let's see a diagram to understand the workflow of local and remote backend. Initially, Qform controller is Install in the Kubernetes cluster. Now let's say a user came and wrote a Qform resource YML, KF YML. And you can see in the left part, he has the user given in the spec.resource, the resource configuration. And as he didn't mention backend ref, which is basically the backend ref field by the backend ref field, we will see it later in the next slide that by the backend ref field, user provided the uh, Kubernetes secret where the back, remote backend bucket configuration is stored. So in this case, user just want to use the default backend that is local backend. Now, after applying this YML, 
our Qform controller will reconcile it and create or update or delete respective cloud resource. You can see after the reconciliation, the spec, uh, there is a field state has come under the spec, which basically holds the state of the resource. So state means the real world state that uh, we do get after the creation or update of the cloud infrastructure. So when user use the local backend, our Qform controller stores that state in the locally Qform resource YML under the spec.state field. It is in, is in the case of local backend. So now if user want to use remote backend, he has to give in uh, Kubernetes secret referenced and under the spec.backend ref, which will hold the backend configure, remote backend configuration which we will see in the later portion. So now user want to use a remote backend. So now if he applies it, Qform control with again, reconcile it and manage it according to the operation that user want. And then, but in this case, the, the state file will not be stored under the spec.state. Now it will be stored in the remote bucket that has been given by the backend ref. So this is the this is how local and remote backend works. So after that, uh, anyone who has access in the remote back, bucket like S3 GCS, they can uh, fetch or they can get the state and use the according used in from their local machine. Now let's see the Terraform and Qform configuration for remote backend support. This is the Terraform configuration where a Linode instance, instance resource configuration is given under the resource block. This is the resource configuration, name Qform instance. And in the provider block, we are given the Terraform credentials like Linode token, uh, Linode credentials like Linode token. And in the Terraform block, we are given the required providers. And under this Terraform block, we are also giving the backend block, which is basically holding the remote backend in this specific case, it is AWS S3. The configuration of this S3 remote bucket has been given here. Here you can see the name of the bucket, which is key from remote backend and the key. Key means it is the path where the state will be stored. Basically it is telling that in this bucket, it will store the state in the folder of key form and under the file of terraform.tf state and the access key and secret key also need to be given. This is the configuration of Terraform, uh, a Linode instance, which is using a backend, which is basically S3 remote backend. So now we will see exactly the same configuration for Q from YML. This is the resource YML, where under the spec.resource, the same resource block, the configuration of the resource is given and in the, in the provider ref, the Linode credential is given and also sensitive field like root pass is given in the secret ref. And termination policy and update policy is two feature of Qform. Here we are using termination policy as delete, update policy is do not destroy. And uh, below, we can see there is a backend ref field which is referencing a query secret named backend secret. The configuration of that secret is this, which is basically holding the configuration of our remote bucket. In this specific case, it is S3. You can see, uh, you can comparison the Terraform and YML uh, remote backend uh, portion. The exact configuration is same. It is given in the, our Qform YML is in a JSON format and only one bucket is allowed, can give more. So this where the exact configuration in Terraform and also in Qform YML for a resource which is using a remote backend S3 in this specific case. Now we'll see the demo of Qform remote backend. For installation details, you can visit our installation page of our official Qform website and also you can get the Qform license from our license server. The links are given here. Today we are going to 
do the demo for Linode Cloud Provider. For this, we need to install Qform Linode Operator. This is the Linode installer. installer. We can install Qform Linode Controller using Helm. The, inst the details instruction is given in our website. You can go through and read this in details, but the summary is like here. We are going to use a Helm install command and we are given the Qform Provider Linode. And then we need to get the Helm chart from our chart repo. And the version is given here, latest version. And also we are creating a namespace gift name gift form where the Linode provider, gift form provider Linode operator will be installed. And we need to give the license file of gift form. So you can also check whether your installation has been done successfully or not by this below command. So now I will share my terminal for starting the demo. Before starting the demo, I would like to mention that there can be three types of cases currently that give from support for any give from resources. One is user will only use local backend. That means from the beginning to the end. And another case can be user will use only remote backend from beginning to the end. There will be no uh, local backend from the beginning to the end, the deletion of the resource user will only use the remote backend and then the third case is user can first use the local backend and then in the middle can switch from local backend to remote backend so i'm going to show the third case here as it covers the first two cases behavior also so first i'm going to create a resource with only using the local backend and i will see the create update operation and then we'll switch to remote backend and also see the update and create operation and also the delete operation to confirm that the expected behavior has been occurred by our Qform controller. So I'm currently using kind version 11.1 and uh, when it Sorry, when it is version 21.1. There are three terminal here. On the left part, I am currently in this directory, manifest directory of our manifest files where I will apply those files from this terminal. And in the right above terminal, I am watching the instance give from instance phase so currently there is no instance so it's showing that not found in the below we'll do our access extra task you know so this is the yml of resource yml where uh, backend ref also is there so initially i will not use the remote backend just use only local backend so i i just comment out the backend ref field Okay, before I apply, we can see this is the Linode Cloud Provider dashboard. You can see there is no Linode instance named Qform. And also this is the AWS dashboard where there is a S3 bucket named Qform Remote Backend where we will basically store our state. And currently there is no objects in this bucket. So this all are empty. Let's apply the Linux instance YML. I'm using demo namespace here. Okay, before let's uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that the Qform operator has been already installed in my machine. Linux operator. You can see it is the state is status is running. This is the Qform provided Linux operator. And the secrets, we can get the secrets in the demo space where we can see there are uh, the secrets that we are referencing here. One is Linode credential, another one is Linode sensitive secret, 
this is the Linux credential secret. This is the Linux sensitive secret where we are giving the root pass, as I've said earlier. And this is the secret of backend secret where we are giving the S3 backend configurations. All are applied before. You can see Linux credential, Linux sensitive secret, and also backend secret. They have applied before. So let's apply the Linux instance YML without using remote backend initially. So it has created and the phase is in progress. That means reconciliation has started. And we can see the cloud dashboard. You can see there is a, the level that, that we have provided is QFM demo. So you can see uh, a Linux instance, the level QFM demo is currently in provisioning state. Uh, let's wait a bit to get it into running state. So it has come to the running state and the phase will come in the current. Yeah, the phase has come to current. That means the creation has been done successfully. Now, as we have used uh, only the local backend, so as expected behavior, that is our, after creating this, the state field will be there under the spec field of our key from resource. YML. So let's get the state field. We are here getting the state field under the spec of our from instance resource YML. You can see the state has it stored under the dot spec of our from resource YML. So that means it has showed the expected behavior of local backend. So now we will see we have seen the creation now we'll see the update operation let's update the linear instance the other instance is configured it is again gone to reconciliation portion and the phase is in progress so here we have changed the level of our key from linear instance the, we have changed from key from demo to key from demo namespace. Let's refresh it to see whether it has changed or not. Yeah, the level of our Linux instance has changed from key from demo to key from demo update. You can see it here. And that means update also has been done successfully. We can also do SSH on our created Linux instance. I can do this like this. Yeah. So the sensitive secret, that means root pass was given. That was this one. We need to give this here. Yeah, we have successfully entered into the linear instance, which we have created here. So the update and create also done, and we have successfully done the SSH into our uh, created linear instance. So here it has showed the expected behavior using the only the local backend. So now we will shift to remote backend. By shifting remote backend, we need to remove the comment here and then apply it. So let's apply it. Yeah, it has gone to reconciliation and the phase is in progress. So we didn't change anything else. So we just changed the backend ref here added. So the expected behavior is where we saw before that the spec under the spec dot state, the state has been stored by our QFM controller of a QFM instance local YML. But now as we have switched to remote backend, so that state should have should be gone and it should be 
put into the remote backend that we have given that in this specific case that is s3 mode s3 bucket so let's see whether it worked so it has come to the current that means reconciliation has done successfully so now we will again see the state of the from instance you can see there is no state so if we just do the yml you can see there is no state under the spec because it has gone it was the expected behavior so where it has gone it should be in the our aws s3 remote bucket that name is give from remote backend under the give from folder in the terraform the tf state file so you can see before it was, there was nothing now a folder created named give from as we have given the key here that is give from slash terraform.tf state so under the give from folder it will be the state will be stored into the terraform.tf state file so let's see yeah there is a terraform.tf state file if we open this file we can see the state that the resource state you can see it is exactly same as the terraform configuration also the version terraform version and everything is there so it is equivalent to terraform configuration so the our transform transfer we have done successfully and it is not here in the local it gone to the remote so now we will see we will see whether our the transfer has done successfully now we will see whether our qform controller can read it the state from the remote backend and then apply it if we change anything like now if we change again want to change the level so cut the update then we will get back to the qform demo from qform demo update level so now if we apply it let's see what happened yes configured the it phase is in progress that means reconciliation has started and we still are in that Linode instance that means Linode VM that means we are working on the same instance that's why it didn't get out so if we see refresh the Linode cloud dashboard yeah the level has again updated from Q from demo update to Q from demo and in this case it the state didn't the qform controller didn't read it state from the local instance yml it read from the remote backend bucket here from this so now also as we have changed this uh, from level so in the state file there the this change also should be happened because this in it was the before changes the level so if, if, if you can see that the level was here give from demo update so this was the level before now it should be give from demo only so let's see yeah the level has changed to give from demo that means in the remote bucket the state file also has changed so our controller could successfully read it and also write it into it so the update and create also has been done successfully so now we'll see the delete operation let's delete the resource it has gone to in progress phase that means reconciliation started and the phase changed to terminating you can see that means it is currently deleting the resource so there is no resource named give form yeah there is no linode instance named give form so the resource has gone so another also another expected behavior is after deleting the resource the the state file should have also gone so we will also see that you can see the resource has gone so and uh, we have came out from the ssh so now let's see whether the state has gone or not you can see yeah you can see there is no object in the qform remote backend bucket so it has shown the expected behavior
Yeah, everything worked fine. So this was the demo of QFORM remote backend where we have seen the local backend and also the remote backend. And also in between we switched from local to remote backend. So that these three cases currently our QFORM remote uh, in our feature of QFORM remote backend we are supporting. Now the another feature that we have added in our latest release that is Qform CLI, and what we will see what can be done by the Qform CLI. Uh, basically, Qform provides a QCTL plugin to interact with Qform resources, and currently we have added the get tf command to generate the Terraform files from the Qform resources that just before we have seen our Qform resources we have created. So these resources were in the YML. That is uh, Kubernetes YML. So now if we want to see the exact configuration of that resource into in the Terraform language, that means ACL, this gettf command will help us. By this gettf command, two files will be created. One is main.tf and another one is terraform.tf state. The main.tf is the exact conversion from Qform resource to Terraform ACL configuration and the Terraform.tf state is the resource state, which is also the exact conversion from the Qform state, resource state to Terraform state. And after generating these files, as these are equivalent to exact, exact equivalent to Terraform, so we can apply these files from a Terraform. And our, the Terraform will recognize the, the same resource or infrastructure and we can work from anywhere, like from Qform or Terraform. So we can work in vice versa. So this was the Qform CLI's feature, basically. So we can install Qform CLI by these commands for installation de details. We, you can visit our installation page into our official Qform website, and you can use these commands also. I have already installed this key from CLI in my machine. So now let's see an example. Uh, before seeing the example, this is the, the con convention of our key from CLI command, that is get tf. You can see we have used kfcdl, kf, and the get tf command. And under the get tf command, there is resource, which is basically the kind, singular form of kind of the resource. And also you can use singular or plural in, 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 in one, one will work. And then we need to give the resource name. And also we need to give the namespace of the resource and we can give a flag, directory flag, where we can define the path in which if we give this directory path and then our the, there's two files that is main.tf and terraform.tf state will be generated on, on that path specifically. If we don't give it, then the file generated files will be printed into the console where we are going to uh, run out these commands. So here is the example command where we are we are trying to get the conversion of Qform resource the instance resource, which name is Qform instance, which is uh, in the demo namespace and the folder path is given in our current directory generated folder. So let's see, let's see the ex examples and so on. Here in this directory, you can see there is a folder name generated and there is nothing, no files is in this folder. So we will generate our resource, gen we will generate our main.tf and uh, from the .tf state of uh, in layered instance in this folder. So for this, also for this, uh, the resource that we are going to convert from the Qform YML to Terraform, that resource need to be in current state. So currently there is no resource. So I'm just going to apply, create a resource. You can, uh, you can use remote backend or local backend, anything to get the, you to use the key from CLI, 
in the both of case, the reference array will generate these two files. So let's again just create the resource for the sake of using the key from CLI and using the get tf command to generate the main.tf and from the tf state files. So it is in progress. It will come in the running state. Then we can, and it will, the face need to be in current. So then we can use the kfctl get tf command. So we are going to generate in this folder, in generated folder. So let's come one step back. Now I am in the demo, demo directory. And now I can use, let's wait to commit in current state. It is booting. Yeah, the state has come to current and the phase is, uh, the state has come to the running and the phase is current. So now we can uh, use our serial kf get tf command. So let's use this command, let's apply it. Yeah, you can see, there are two files has been created. One is main.tf, another one is star from the tf state. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to click on the main.tf as it converted from the key from YML to Terraform and uh, it convert all the with including the ter like Linode token and everything. So I can just skip this part. I can show it like uh, removing the token. If you see this. Yeah, this is the main.tf, which is the exact conversion, basically, which is the exact conversion of our Qform Linode instance, and this is the Terraform TF state. So now if uh, we apply, now if we apply uh, the Terraform, if we do the Terraform in it and then apply it, the Terraform should be recognized, uh, the same infrastructure that has created by Qform. So let's see. For this, let's enter in the generated directory. Yeah. So now I just again did the control there to come take back the token for which were I omitted before to show this because it was like a secret and it's credential. So if we do Terraform in it in the generated folder in the generated directory. Uh, Terraform will initialize its plugins and all the necessary stuffs. Let's wait a bit. Yeah, the initialization has done successfully. You can see the Terraform initialization in that generated folder has done. So now if we do Terraform plan, then the expected behavior is as we, we didn't change anything. So it will show that the resource ha ha don't doesn't have any changes so it's it's just match the exact configuration so it won't show anything so let's see yeah uh you can see the message here no changes your infrastructure matches the configuration okay so basically the terraform could have successfully recognized our key form resources that has been created and the main.tf and terraform.tf state generated from that queue from Linode instance. So the, the equivalent that I'm talking about all the time that terraform and queue from is uh, working in vice versa. You can work both of them. So it, it proved here. So I just saw that terraform could have recognized our generated files. It's not manual, it was generated. So this this was the and this was the Qform CLA features, and we have seen by our Qform remote backend and also Qform CLA how to manage the cloud infrastructure, how to create, update, delete, and also how to interact with Qform resources. Okay. So let's get back to the slide. So this this that's all for the remote backend and also the Qform CLI. Now 
I am going to hand it over to Tomal to talk about our upcoming features, Terraform module support in QFORM. And thank you. So thank you, Shadar. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and uh, talk about uh, how we're looking to add uh, support for Terraform modules uh, in uh, QFORM. So, you know, let's first talk about what is a module is, right, in terms of a Terraform. So in Terraform, uh, a module is usually a collection of resources but they also have a few additional features like uh, what's called, we call it like internal dependencies, right? So you can create a resource and then take some data from that resource and pass it to the next resource kind of using a variable. Uh, so, so as a result, we create an implicit dependency. So only the way to create the second resource is the, that you have to create the first resource first and then create the second resource. Um, so this is kind of different from what you typically see with the uh, Kubernetes uh, kubectl apply where like, you know, you can apply a folder of YAMLs, but they are all sort of already resolved and they all get applied at the same time. So there is not an internal dependency uh, or not at the YAML level uh, between those uh, or among those. But, but in case of Terraform, when you are writing these Terraform modules, or you know, it's, it's just your sort of custom Terraform docs, um, the ACL uh, uh, files, you can have this kind of uh, internal dependency. So like you can create a VPC first and then maybe deploy a VM inside that VPC. So you have to sort of have set up some firewall rules. So there is an order of doing things. And then the other feature that Terraform modules usually uh, have, you know, is quite commonly used is like the loops, right? So like you want to create like a five different VMs, uh, you are not like you know, writing them as separate YAMLs, right? Like if you think about in Kubernetes, right? If you want to create five different deployment, then you are going to be writing like a five different deployment YAML files and then apply them. Uh, but with the Terraform, usually, you are going to be like you're writing a for loop and then maybe just change the name of the resource, you know, with some loop index and then apply them and then Terraform will automatically go through each one of them and create and run the loop and apply those, right? So, so this is uh, some of the functionality that Terraform uh, usually have uh, has that, uh, you know, there's usually no equivalent in the kubectl uh, as it is. So, so if we kind of you know want to visualize what it really looks like, so it's kind of like this, right? So you have a, like a bunch of resources, you know, we can call them like a resource group uh, that gets applied. You know, you can have a loop in, on them, you know, just like a kind of self-referential. But then once those are done, you kind of go to a next set of YAMLs, sorry, next set of resources uh, that potentially using some data from the first set of uh, you know uh, resources and so on. If you think in terms of like, you know, uh, uh, sort of a computer science lingo, it's kind of like you're doing a topology. You have to do it like a topological sort of this resource graph and then apply them in the order of their dependency, right? So, so this is what, you know, actually done by the Terraform CLI internally, if you look at their source code. Uh, so, so now uh, we want to support those kind of use cases with QForm. So we are looking at it from a two different perspective, right? So there is the use case one where there are existing uh, users are already using the Terraform module. So basically they are an existing user of Terraform. They have, may have been using you know, a lot of the uh, modules from the Terraform registry or may have written their own just modules or maybe there's some third party library they are using, uh, but these are just standard Terraform modules. And so they have a lot of existing investment into the Terraform ACL files. And then the other types of users who are like, you know, uh, starting from QForm first, you can think of they are coming maybe just a Kubernetes uh, first approach, right? They are not uh, trying to migrate everything they have to uh, uh, QForm first, but like start with QForm as, as their starting point. Uh, so, and, and they don't want to really write stuff in HTL anymore. They want to stay with the Kubernetes YAML level. And, and, and also they want to be able to work with any type of uh, Kubernetes resource, not just the uh, QFORM CRDs, but any CRD, any built-in API like pods, deployment services, whatnot, 
or any extended API that Kubernetes has. So, so those are the sort of the second type of users we see. So now we're going to talk about how we can kind of uh, you know address uh, both uh, these types of users or what we are thinking right now. So the thing that I'm talking about here is more like, uh, so this is the next uh, sort of the major feature that we are adding to QForm. So this is a way we, you know, we are sharing our plan with you uh, and we're happy to have your feedback so you know we can kind of uh, you know direct our development work also towards that uh, direction based on your feedback. So for the first type of users who have a whole lot of existing Terraform modules, uh, so this is what we uh, we're thinking. So 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 the, so we're going to create like a two new CRDs. So one CRD will be called the Terraform module definition. So this is effectively what this is doing is this will have like a kind of three core piece of information. So we need a way to be able to actually access those Terraform uh, resources, uh, uh, the, so the ACL files. So it could be like you just mount them using a config map or maybe mount them in a volume, like, you know, like a, put in an S3 bucket or something and point to that bucket or it could be even if you're using something directly from Terraform registry, it could be just a you know, kind of a foreign key to that. Um, so that's how we need to know what the ACL files are. So in this mode, we are not, uh, we're going to just work with the ACLs directly. And then uh, for each module, there are usually the input variables and the output variables, those are defined. And those input variables uh, you know, have their own sort of schema, which usually means uh, like the data type and some kind of validation information, like if this is a required or optional, things like that. And then also same with the output variables. So what we'll do, we'll create a uh, sort of, you know, it's kind of like a, if you are familiar with the custom resource definition uh, API type that Kubernetes has, it's kind of like that. So we'll have that schema of those inputs and outputs, but this is just for Terraform module. So, this is going to be a non-namespace non resource and created one time. So for each sort of this module you have. Uh, and then, uh, so every time you want to create, uh, you know, resources using that module, what you can do is basically create a Terraform module CRD, a custom resource. And there you will have to point to this module definition. So we'll know where to get those, uh, you know, the sort of the module files uh, and how, how, how we can like validate those inputs and outputs. And then uh, actually in the spec section, you know, you basically uh, define the, you know, set the value for the inputs. And then once this, uh, uh, for the inputs, so it's, this, this Terraform module CRD will be pretty similar to what you get with any other uh, sort of the QForm C, uh, resources or CRDs that you are seeing today, right? So the user experience should be pretty much the same. Uh, you can obviously mix and match. So like you can have, you know, resources from multiple different providers in the same module. I mean, if you would like. Uh, so, so this is uh, how it can work. So it will be a resource and then, you know, the, the Terraform module controller will effectively, you know, run the sort of the Terraform apply command. Uh, and once the command runs internally, it will generate the, um, uh, the you know the apply those resources in the cloud but then it will also get the final sort of the terraform state and from that state uh we'll, we'll be recreating the kubernetes yamls that we see so basically at the end of this module definition you'll have two things right you will have those resources created in the cloud as you would expect and then also the corresponding individual custom resources uh, for all the resources also available in your cluster. So that way you will be able to sort of, uh, you know, take that data and use for other purposes, if you like, from, you know, from your application perspective. So this, uh, this will give you, uh, if you are coming from a Terraform first approach, this will kind of uh, take you from the, you know, from your module to the sort of applying that module dynamically using a controller, Kubernetes controller. So you get the benefit of, you know, having the dynamical control, dynamic control, or, you know, sort of the apply, like you update something, it gets applied. But then you also get the uh, QForm custom resources uh, end of the process. So, so you can, you know, use any standard sort of Kubernetes tooling to sort of visualize, monitor those things, you'll be able to do those. So this is uh, the use case flow we are uh, thinking. Uh, uh, so yeah, so there is a, uh, 
yeah, so there's this question about like, you know, uh, how does the Qform resources reconcile all these resources in Kubernetes? So if you are using the uh, Qform resources, the ones that uh, like Shada was showing us, like with those Linode uh, resources, when you apply those resources, uh, we uh, run a Kubernetes controller. It's based on the Q builder. And to be very clear, this controller is not using like a Terraform apply internally. We use uh, the Terraform provider library as a kind of a you know, core library to communicate with those cloud resources directly. So this is actually uh, running a, you know, if you're writing it by hand, let's say, it is going to run pretty much the exact same thing uh, uh, using the Terraform provider library. So this is a, you know, just a, because everything is written in the Go programming language, we are able to do this uh, directly use the Terraform provider uh, library uh, SDK as a library and communicate with the cloud resources. Uh, but then when we, but when we're talking about this uh, Terraform module approach, here we do have to uh, use the sort of the TF plan. Uh, we might uh, we will explore in future if there is a you know more uh, sort of Kubernetes native way to do this. But for at least at the starting implementation, we're going to go with the Terraform apply plan. Uh, and, and apply these uh, resources to sort of take any existing Terraform module and convert them into a sort of a cloud resources and the corresponding Kubernetes custom resource. Um, so, so that's sort of the, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, if you're coming from the Terraform directly, this is how we think we can do it. Uh, then the, the other approach uh, this uh, is, uh, you know, you are starting from Qform first and you want to sort of create this, uh, uh, you know, sort of the cloud resources. So you, you are not really like, you know, you're not even thinking about Terraform at that point anymore. It's more like just, okay, this is just a Kubernetes CRD that can create this cloud resource. But I do want to create this, uh, like, a, you know, the, the graph that you saw, like, you know, I have like a bundle of resources that I want, I want to apply first and then take some output from there and do the next step. So, uh, so here, what the approach we are thinking is that, you know, if we go back to this uh, here uh, image, Effectively, this each individual resource group becomes just a standard Terraform, sorry, a Helm chart. Okay, so nothing special about this. This is just a standard Helm chart with the in the individual resources as defined using uh, uh, the Qform custom resources. And you can also put any Kubernetes resource. Like you want to mix up like your pod service with some cloud provider resource, you can do it because this is just a you know from to, from the Kubernetes point of view, it is a standard Kubernetes resource. Uh, the way you can handle loop is pretty straightforward because uh, you know the Terraform, uh, sorry, the Helm chart, the Go template syntax that it uses uh, it supports uh, for loops, right? So it has a range loop, which is basically for loop. You can have conditionals, so you can do all of that natively uh, using uh, this just a standard Helm chart, right? So you create a Helm chart, you have you know you do Helm install, it will effectively create all those uh, resources in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and then our controller will just see those resources has been created and um, you know, apply them into the cloud. I think the part that uh, becomes interesting is uh, how you then take something out of this YAMLs and apply it to the next step. So this uh, uh, part, uh, you know, so when you tried it the first time, the way we were thinking about is basically create a you know, kind of a, you know, let's go, I mean, we're using the module term quite a few times here, but basically let's create a new sort of a module uh, which will have the sequence defined. So basically the graph that we saw will be defined here. So this actions effectively kind of represents one of the sort of those uh, circles or the vertexes in the graph. So you can say, okay, this is my first uh, sort of Helm chart. And uh, once this goes into the radius state, I want to apply the second Helm chart but when I do the second Helm chart, what I want to do, I want to update the values file for the second Helm chart based on some data from the first Helm chart, right? So you can basically kind of take some resources from there and override values in the second Helm chart. So that way you can pass data from sort of the first step, right? Let's say you have created a VPC in the first step and then uh, this file will, what it will do, it will see that, okay, uh, this uh, has the, you know, um, the second uh, Helm chart needs to some value set from the first step. So it will, you know, just take that once those um, first step is in a um, ready state and apply the second Helm chart. So effectively what we are doing is that 
uh, you know, you're kind of applying a sequence of Helm chart. So Helm is uh, chart is giving you all those loops, conditionals, all those templating feature that you would expect. Uh, but then uh, also the packaging, obviously, that comes with Helm. So you can kind of store them in a OCI uh, compatible registry, right? Like, you, like the, what's called the Helm chart registry, right? So you can do all of that if you want, uh, because it's just a standard Helm chart. Uh, and then uh, passing the values from one step to the next, that is done through sort of this kind of uh, uh, EML-based approach. So this is one app, uh, you know, sort of model we have considered and actually we have a, sort of a POC. So this CRD is kind of coming from that. I think that what we found is that obviously this has the benefits, uh, you know, you get the Helm chart, which is pretty standard. Uh, you know, pretty much everybody knows it these days. Uh, you know, the loops, conditionals, all those functionality that you expect, like, you know, just, you just use a writing a standard Helm chart. So uh, nothing special there. I think what happens is that uh, it, it could become a little unnatural in terms of basically the, the, the graph, uh, you know, this, uh, this um, like this, uh, the thing I was talking about, like a topological sort of this graph, right? Like you have to kind of create, you know, this graph in, in uh, manually, uh, so you have to create like a multiple hand charts and then kind of you know create this sequence. Uh, so it's it, that can be feel a little unnatural because you may you know when you are writing a Terraform HCL files, you are not really thinking in terms of exactly what order things will get executed. You're just writing your variables, creating dependencies, and then Terraform kind of does all of that automatically. So so that's uh, that experience can be a little hard to achieve with this model. So. So, so as a result, what we have been doing is we have been looking at a second approach, uh, so which is actually addresses these concerns. So in this approach, what will happen? Uh, so we'll extend the Terraform Helm chart, uh, uh, sort of the rendering process. So if you think of how, how the Helm install command works is that when you run the Helm install command, it takes the values from your values. And then if you do like a dash dash set, some things, right? So you see it coalesces all those values into a single JSON object and then doing a standard, you know, go template rendering, right? So then it goes into the template folder, takes each file, renders them. And then uh, once the rendering is complete, it basically uses Kubernetes client uh, to apply them into the cluster. I mean, that's pretty much all that's going on inside uh, the, when you do a Helm install or Helm update. Uh, so here we can effectively achieve the same uh, approach. Uh, what we will we'll do here is that you will have uh, this, all your dependencies uh, defined in a single uh, Helm chart. But then when you do this uh, extended Helm install command, I mean, it will probably become part of a Qform CLI. Uh, so when you do that Helm install command, uh, this extended install command, it will you know, typically in a standard Helm chart, what it does, it, it will render all the YAMLs uh, at one time. So there is no like a deferred rendering. So what we can do, I mean, you know, we have looked into this uh, as a, just a standard like a POC to see if it's even possible. It is very easily doable. So effectively it will render the uh, template files that are already renderable based on the current values and then apply those. And once those uh, resources are ready, uh, it will make those resources available as a sort of a values for the next set of YAML files. So, so you will be able to kind of refer those resources that has been already rendered. And then uh, once those resources are already a standard JSON, so they, are, they don't look any different from like, you know, when you, the way you access values into the uh, standard Helm chart, right? Like in a standard Helm chart, you, how do you do it? You do double curly braces, then say dot values, dot blah, 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 you access that field. So now you will be able to the, access those resources that has been already you know, rendered as part of this Helm chart as like a dot resources, or it could be a function call. So dot resources dot get, you know, you provide the resource sort of kind and the name. So, yeah, and then you get the YAML and then basically you can just do standard dot, you know, like the syntax notation to access any field into that, you know, other resource, right? So that way you can have, you know, create a VPC first, and then create a bunch of VMs or like you get a bunch of VMs, but then like, you know, do something else with that, like open up some firewall rules. So all of that, you know, it'll be, uh, this it will be pretty much standard and look natural. So instead of a ACL syntax, you are writing the, you know, any Kubernetes custom resource or uh, built-in resource and using a standard code template syntax, right? So it just uh, gives you that extra 
functionality uh, we are extending the helm install command which is now aware that the, the templates could be self-referential that's all it is really doing so this approach uh, can be done and 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 then this is just a, you know from a helm's perspective this is just a standard helm chart so you can store in a standard helm repository or just give it in a git repo or you know oci registry whatever you like and this will all work so so yeah so this will you know sort of the, so it has all the pros of using helm and just a kind of kubernetes native approach uh, with the one issue is, is that it will need a custom sort of helm extension um, so but but we have looked into it and it's definitely doable uh, so these are the sort of the two models we are looking at uh, for supporting uh, sort of this kind of module i mean i'm not okay yeah so like you know have like a bundle of acls or bundle of resources and how you can apply them maintaining their internal dependency so we're looking to uh, work on this uh, in as a part of the next uh, feature release uh, so for qform uh, so we're we'll happy to get any feedback you may have or any question you may have um, so that's kind of come uh, brings to the end of my part of the presentation so we're kind of uh, running a little short on time but i'll uh, just go through the questions that has been asked in the zoom chat and uh, try to answer those. So I guess the one question was, you know, in the demo, we showed that we can go from sort of the Qform YAML to Terraform. Can we go it the other way? So the short answer is the functionality is already there. It's just not exposed in a CLI format today. So we're looking to, you know, we're going to go and add that as part of this whole module work because it will actually be necessary to make sure, like, you know, if I, when we talked about the UC1 use case, one where you know we go from the Terraform and but we do create the Qform resources, so it'll be available. Uh, do we have any plans to add more cloud provider resources? Uh, so sure, we can add any cloud provider resources. As you may already know, this adding support for a new cloud provider is a kind of like a mechanical process. It's just a one time we have to set up like a Git repo and some CI CD to make sure those things are you know generated uh, and uh, you know sort of gets out some automated testing. But once that's done. You know it keeps running so there's a question uh, do we have uh, support for a scaleway i believe scaleway support is already there uh ovh i believe ovh support is already there uh i, I have to i believe it is there uh but if not we can definitely add it easily uh aws gcp azure yeah all those are all uh, pretty much uh, uh you know are there yes so as denise was saying that you know you see one is kind of their primary use case so yeah so i, I mean it's, it's totally understandable because a lot of users are coming from a kubernetes uh, you know sort of a, sorry existing terraform uh you know set up uh, install you know so install base so so it, it will be the case as expected i suppose uh, so we're looking to add that as sort of our next major feature uh there's a question can we elaborate do uh, Q from controllers reconcile all changes in EMS. Yes, if you are, uh, you know, um, so so if you are going from a UC one case where you still want to make the changes into the Terraform first and then take into Q form, then you still have to make them changes in the Terraform HCL files first, right? But if you say no, I, once I do those changes, I want to just switch over to Q form kind of EMS and make those changes directly in Q form first. That will be also possible. You, you just have to make sure that you know sort of you identify that and so it'll be like a field into the uh you know q form uh yaml like you can say uh, when we're looking at how to do it exactly so it could be to say that it is managed by the q form operator or not or it could be based on the owner reference uh, you know it could be either one of them so basically there will be a way to tell you that whether you want it to be come from the uh acl files and this just be a kind of like a read-only mode by the Qform resources. So it'll uh, just be there available as a data, or you want that Qform resources to be as the first party resource. So in a way like change, make changes and get those reconciled. So either option will be totally possible. Uh, is, uh, is there no analog to XDR uh, of cross plane? I had to wrap my head around, but I managed to create a custom private bucket with the bucket policy isolated user attached to it, all those using resource compositions. So uh, our view has been that uh, you know, uh, uh, so this is actually, uh, you know, I had some time, uh, time to talk to some of the uh, users of uh, this uh, cross plane or XDR. Uh, I think XDR uh, sounds cool. I mean, it, it, I think it solves a, a kind of in a similar problem, 
but uh, currently, at least my uh, you know opinion is that I mean I'm sure based on user experience it will you know, can change that XDR or or not necessarily the XDR but the purely declarative approach for defining these loops and conditionals gets uh, is usually underpowered or like they don't usually have the necessary expressive power that you would expect. It's almost like the back in the day of ACL one days right where you didn't have loops and all that. And, and yes, you can do some amount of uh, composition, right? Most of these composition are kind of like saying, okay, I want to the, go to this cube, the YAML path and change this field to that, okay? But how it happens if you want to have some kind of customization, right? Maybe you want to change something capital letter to small letter, you want to have loops, you may want to have some kind of conditional where like, you know, if certain condition is not true, then you don't want to tear certain resources. All those things, uh, what I find becomes necessary if you are like really doing something, you know, production in the production. And that's why we have been, you know, instead of going to a purely declarative like XDR or whatever you want to call it type of approach, we're trying to, you know, leaning heavily into Helm charts because the benefit is that inside the Helm chart, uh, you have all those sort of the templating functionality that gives you those all the sort of the you know expressiveness and the power that you might need to actually create the resources. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a programming power, right? Like you can add loops, conditionals, you know, get, decide whether you're going to create or something or not. And 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 uh, we feel that 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 gives you all the necessary sort of you know if you come thinking about like it coming from a full ACL like a Terraform world to just a purely Kubernetes world. Uh, it, it kind of keeps you in the same, you know, in terms of your ability as a user to express what you need, uh, same level. And and since Helm is already, I, I would think, I mean, it's pretty much the way you can do, you know, like an application deployment in Kubernetes. So I, I feel like uh, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, so that's what uh, we have been uh, kind of thinking about, like whether, uh, so instead of not doing a purely declarative have a, a way and then Helm also gives you this packaging so you know you can store it, you can share it with other people. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any other question, uh, we can happy to give an answer maybe in a few minutes, but, uh, uh, and then, you know, you, you all how uh, you can, you know, you obviously you have our email address. It's, uh, you know, you can write support at appscode.com or hello at appscode.com and you can follow on our Twitter. I mean, some of you are already on our various, uh, you know, sort of a chat channel, so you can reach out to us direct, directly there too. Uh, we're happy to, you know, talk to you more um, and uh, and have your feedback, so so that uh, you know we can address the use cases that we typically see in in, in among our users. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Dennis uh, and Alex, uh, Alexander, uh, and I, so for joining. Um, and uh, we'll see. Hope to see you next time. Uh, so thank you, everyone, uh, for joining out uh, today. Have a good day. Bye.